Greetings and salutations, my friends. Welcome to a brand new guide. Today we are taking our first foray onto Mosquito Lake. Um, show you a couple of spots, but there will be a separate video for like good spots. But more talk about the game in a bit more in depth. We're going to talk today a little bit more about the sort of progression system in the game and achievements and statistics and all that sort of good stuff and everything like that. We'll do it while we're fishing because, you know, multitasking. Right. So we've got our rod, we haven't bought anything, we're still just level one, so we, we're keeping it simple. So right away, as you start here, you can actually hire a boat if you like and, and float out onto the river, onto the lake and cast from there and stuff, but you don't need to do that and it costs money. And we're saving money because we want to talk about what we want to go for first. So there's actually a really nice spot literally at the camp, just walk out onto this bit of decking. Um, oh, server restart for Steam Wallet fix in an hour and 12. Good news. Good news. Also, with the chat room, we talked about the Loki Doki chat room. Um, once you click on it and you join join the chat room, whenever you log in, you will automatically be, at the, be in the chat room. Pretty much all of us just hang out here all the time, to be honest. Um, but you can if you want. If you want to go back to the default place, you can go back to the pier, which is where we are now, or join other chat rooms and stuff. Just remember, it will go back to where you were first. So let's cast out. We're going to try and catch some fish whilst not looking at our float. Um, and also, like, don't be afraid to move the float. Don't think you, you know, wherever you... Because unlike a lot of these action fishing games where you've got, like, a exact button where that's going to cast and stuff, you have to sort of... You know, check it by eye and stuff. So you can, if it's not where you want it to be, you can just sort of wiggle it around a bit and go, yeah, I want it just there, please, thanks. Um, but let's talk about a couple of things, and that is uh, what the leveling system is all about, and also where do you go first? Because what do you buy first? What are we saving for first? Um, so that's going to be, I don't want, I'm, I'm going to get a bite. I'm forcing it to happen before I move screens. Remember, if we go, if we're looking in here, the game isn't paused. You know, check back. All right. Huh. Okay. It's just, God damn you game. God damn you. So, hang on. There's, there's the nibble. Generally speaking, if you get those first little nibbles, sometimes the float will just disappear. But if you get a little nibble like that, it means you're going to, at some point, generally speaking, you're going to get a, a proper bite. And that's actually not a bad sleeper. That's our first one, over 100 grams. We're in the big time, boys. So as you can see, these fish don't really put up much of a fight. Which is a good thing, because if you remember, we don't have a reel. This bit of line coming off the end of our pole is all we've got. And the shock absorber to stop the line just breaking is the pole itself. As it bends, that's the shock absorber. So, um, yeah, so... We don't want to cook a massive fish. There's always the chance. I've seen lots of reels, rods, lines, torn off, broken, snapped, and all that good stuff. And I missed that one. Also, don't worry too much about... When I first started this game, I was like, I've got to be really careful. Because in real life, if I touch this bloody bit of grass in the water there, I'm going to get stuck. I'm going to have a nightmare. In this game, you can get snagged. Um, on these trees, on lily pads, on logs in the water and stuff like that. But you can pretty much get out of it every time um, just by hitting the right mouse button a bunch of times and it sort of tries to free it, which we'll show you as we, we level up. Um, but yeah, don't panic about getting in there. You can get nice and close. You can risk getting close to it. But it, with anything in these games, it just takes a little bit of practice to work out you know, how hard you need to swing it to get to where you want to and all that sort of stuff. So unless we're going to get a, a nibble, I, um, <laughs> I don't want to miss it. I'm going to show you the skill screen. So these are the main things, types of fishing in the game. <clears throat> there is six main areas. Um, three are fishing and three are the other stuff. So we'll t I'll show you the other stuff first. First thing is make so you get one skill point every time you level up so you can use it wherever you want you can put it all into float fishing if that's what you want to do and you can do all that sort of stuff um but a lot of these stuff will be locked until you get a certain percentage skill so we're gonna look at making lures right so that's making all the different types of lures and stuff like that we can make the novgorod spoon or the moscow spoon currently and we can put points into that that means we can make him 
Right, having this ability, you can make a simple Moscow spoon, and at each point will upgrade, increase the quality of all self-made metal spoons. So as you can see, kind of self-explanatory. But you don't need to worry about this until later on if you're really going to get into the sort of making spoon business. You can't sell them, unfortunately. You can't set up a little stall selling spoons. Just check the float. We're all good. Move it a little bit. We'll just bring it in just to make sure. Should we try a bit of bread? So B, and then click it, and we have bread. Have bread will travel. There we go. Look at that. That's just lovely like that. Um, <clears throat> so the two sort of crafting skills um, to really go for are making ground bait and harvesting baits. So we'll talk about ground bait first. And if you don't know, ground bait is basically a powder substance with various different ingredients that you add a bit of water to and mash it up either into balls to throw out into the lake to attract the fish or if you're using a feeder or a method feeder or something like that or a PVA bag, which is a dissolvable bag. Um, you put the ground bait in, you cast it out, let's say on a feeder rod. When it sinks to the bottom, all the good stuff comes out next to your nice little bit of sweet corn or whatever you're using and are more likely to attract fish. It's useful all the way through the game, so you don't need to use it early on because you have to buy ground bait, okay? And each time you level this up, you get more components to make better and better ground bait. Um, and, each, and each time you do it, it, it gives you a quality out of 20, out of 10, yes. Um, and each of these upgrades. So if I wanted to mix a ground bait, if I whacked five points into that, I'll have a better chance of making good quality ground bait. Me personally, I wouldn't bother putting points in. If one of these green circles here means this, you don't put points in it. You just have the ability to add in semolina, ground crackers, corn, millet porridge, bloodworm, oh, making me hungry, maggot, vanilla, sunflower oil, and caramel, and stuff like this. Um, there's me float. Oh, I, I think it was there all along. So it's starting to get dark a bit now. So different fish species, different spots might work better, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then if you said. Oh, sorry, the O button on the keyboard brings out brings in your skills. So each level of these, so this one is unlocked when I get 15% in making ground bait currently at 0%. Each one of these gives you different, more attractive to the fish foods and stuff like this. And it's something you want to level up with your character. You don't want to be get to level 20 and you're fishing for carp and you don't have any ability to make ground bait. So... I'll show you the actual crafting process in a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but um, So that's that's the ability to use the ingredients and make the ground bait. Then we have got harvesting baits. Now, it's a really good skill, this, and you want to be leveling up all the time. Um, it's something you can, should be doing all the time. You need to buy a spade, which I'll show you where they are in a minute, and that allows you to dig for worms. Bonuses, you get free bait that you don't have to pay for, and it also skills up all the other things so you can make um, wet bread as bait um potato cubes so you can buy things in the shop like you can buy loaves of bread which you then use this skill to make into wet bread um potatoes into potato cubes and all this sort of stuff and there's pea porridge you, there's a few different ingredients like processed peas and stuff like this um and it's really useful to use and like i said free bait early on is really good we're getting a little nibble here boys getting a little nibble <clears throat> a lot of the species of fish that we're fishing for do fish 24 or 7. So we don't have to worry about too much about night time. Go on, mate. Go on. You know you want it. Yeah, Don't go too early. That was a decent little bite, but it wasn't enough. Not for me. And now he's just buggered off, isn't he? No, no he's still there. The fish got... See in the bottom left there? Fish got away. You see? So we know that that one, actually, it might have been a tiny fish that hooked itself and then got away. Um, that's the only time you get that message. It's not like when you miss a bite, you get that message. That's actually a fish that it could have been a tiny little rough or something like that that got away. So let's go back into here. So I'll show you the spade. We've, we've covered the sort of ground bait making and now we've covered the harvesting of bait. Um, it allows you to create different baits because a, um, a lot of these baits you can buy at the shop but it's sometimes a lot cheaper or sometimes it's impossible to, they won't have them in stock in the shop, but you can buy the ingredients, make it yourself. Like, and we'll talk about baits probably in a special video because there's so many different baits and we'll talk about what's good for what and all that sort of good stuff. 
Next up, we have um, we'll go we'll go from this side on the main skill. So we've got floater fishing, which is float fishing, which is what we're doing now. So what we could do, if we really enjoyed float fishing, hang on, I just I just sensed a bite. I just felt a bite using the force. Okay, what you could do. I think it's very good to diversify how you fish and try out all the different stuff. Because, like, me as a kid, I am, and growing up, I loved carp fishing. So that was with carp rods and feeder rods and all that sort of good stuff, method feeding and all that sort of stuff. And that's what I gravitated to when I started this game. But I'm actually really enjoying spinner fishing, and I've never spinner fished in my entire life. But it's really because you go for pike and perch and predator fish, um, and they fight really, really well. So I'd say don't worry too much about the points early on um hang on i can't concentrate with that float bobbing about just either eat it or book off all right that's your two choices you've got five seconds i'm gonna take it away from you <laughs> just he's just taking it. He, he knows he's on youtube this fish he's like yeah look i'm famous lads watch me watch it he's not gonna do it is he just take the just take the bait mate Lovely bit of bread. You're making a nice sandwich. And the, also, the baits you make don't have a quality to them. So, there we go. That's he's, he's Oh, he got away, little little bastard. Um, so, you don't get like you, you make some bread and you go, oh, this is quality three bread. It's just you've made bread. Um, F on the keyboard. Gives you a flashlight, so it's quite handy if you're fishing in close like this and you're having trouble to see your float. Um, it doesn't scare fish away. I don't think it has any effect on the game-wise that way, but that's handy. Um, also, there was another shortcut that I wanted to remember to tell you that I've completely forgotten. Yep, yep, it's gone out of my head. It's gonna, it'll probably come back at some point when it's useful. Yeah, so back to float fishing. So what we can do here is, is we have the ability to use the telescopic rod. Obviously, that's what we're doing. And you can basically put points in this, and it will give you more casting distance and accuracy because it doesn't always go straight. You can sort of look where you want to cast, and it might go off left or right. So it gives you and better control of the fish and all that sort of good stuff. And you can put, what, seven points? Two, three, yeah, seven points. Um, <clears throat> and then we've got other things that we can start with, like a spinning reel which we don't have reels yet, so we don't have to worry about. Using a rig with a fixed line. We've got a luminous float, so we can got glow-in-the-dark floats. And then we unlock the different rods that we saw in the first episode, bolognese rod. We've got using a hair rig, which is when you're using certain baits like boilies, rather than putting them on the hook because it would obscure the hook. It's a tiny little thin bit of line that comes off the back of the hook, and you put the bait there, and when the fish sucks it in, they suck the hook with them, and then they get caught. Um, different rigs and stuff like this. You don't have to worry too much about this because we'll talk about it as we unlock these things. Um, and then you've got spin fishing, which is basically the same idea. So you've got the basic, I can use a spinning rod, um, but I can only use spinner baits at the moment. And when I get to 15% in spin fishing, I can do um, spoon fishing and then jigging and then different type of rod and a different type of reel and all that sort of stuff um, that will unlock. And then you can put points into it or you cannot. Once you've learned something, I can use a spinning reel and a spinning rod here. I can still catch big fish with it. You don't have to put any points in it to make it a viable thing. You only get so many points, so you've got to sort of concentrate. It's like, okay, am I spinning enough that I'd actually like some casting distance and accuracy? You know, that sort of thing. Um, so if I put, if I wanted to concentrate on spinning, then this technique of fishing with spinner baits improves. The higher the technique, the greater the chance of catching a trophy fish, bigger fish. So that might be a thing you want to put points into. But don't worry about spending your points early on. Don't, don't even think about it. Because you can save up, try the different methods of, of fishing. Um, and then decide, actually, yeah, I really like float fishing. I'm going to go with this. You know, I'm going to go with, I'm going to save up. And when bolognese rods unlock, I'm going to put all the points in there. <clears throat> Which is at what? 30%. So we get a luminous float at 25%. 30% and all that sort of good stuff and like most games as you level up higher the leveling up is slower not getting any bites here let's head off around the we'll just go to a different spot so we can have a look on the map see where we're going um, around here's a nice little spot so we'll head over here like I said I'm going to do a, a lake guide and river guide for each of the different venues we can fish at um, so we want to go 
just alongside. This is they've a lot of the places have got names. This is Perch Creek. Um, there's a spot just here I like. Um, there's some nice lily pads here that you can just flick it out. Generally speaking, and this is very general because you can catch fish from anywhere, um, especially with float fishing, is that open, clear water is not that good. You want to find features where you think the fish might hang out for a bit of safety and stuff like this. So this is a lovely little spot here. We'll make sure we just pull it out a little bit so we can sort of see it. It's a lovely little spot here because the fish will feel calm and then they'll see that lovely bit of bread that's not catching anything at the moment. Um, we'll, give it, we'll give the bread a minute uh, before we go back into it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's spin fishing. Uh, very sort of similar theme. And then we've got bottom fishing. So you start off... <clears throat> straight away we can fish with a feeder rod. Um, then you've got a paternoster rig, which we'll show you when we get to it. Hair rigs, which is shared with the other tree. Um, the picker rod. And then when you get later on, you can use the carp rods, which are like heavy duty stuff and all that good stuff. Oh yeah, the thing I wanted to show you, which is quite important in this game, is you can put your rods down um, with the zero key. And you can put your rod down here. So there, our float is still there. And it's not going to fall off, right? Even if it hooked into a jaws, it, that, it's not going to pull your rod in like I have had happen to me in real life um, it's not going to pull your rod in but it allows you to do other stuff so this could be my feeder rod and I've just cast it out I've put it down and uh, I'm doing a little bit of float fishing over here and even if you're doing other stuff um, you know it allows you to carry on fishing so I can just keep an eye on the float while I'm doing other stuff where I'm digging for worms or whatever and then come back to it and all that sort of good stuff what we're going to do is I'm gonna give some worm action and and just like in real life fishing as this is a simulation that's the thing not a sort of fishing action game is that some days are better than others some days you just might struggle to catch fish some days you might catch a hundred in a 24-hour period on the lake it's it's like that you know and you find a little spot that's working and it's it's glorious when you find an, a nice little spot that's... I would like to catch another fish before I like, get to level two. Would be nice before the end of this video. I'm just basically showing you how not to, to catch fish. Good stuff. Um, but, like, when lots of people ask people on Twitch and they've asked me for advice, what depth should I fish at? What bait should I use? What? The, and the biggest thing is experiment. Just experiment. You can't go wrong. You know, you don't use up a bait. If I don't get a fish... You know, I, I'm not using up the bait every time I cast out. That's the same worm that's going out and back and forth and stuff. And that sort of stuff is cheap, especially when we start digging them up. Okay. Nobody wants any... Act. No, They're just taking the piss. There's a spot. Um, if you go this side, or this barrel... Jeez, it looks a bit scary down there, doesn't it? Um, trust me, you'll get a tingling in your willy. Right, when you hook into a big fish. All right, trust me. All right, it's a good tingle. <clears throat> so let's go here, another little nice spot. There's some logs here, some lilies. There's all that good stuff. So, of course, I'll probably just, you know, won't get any fish. <clears throat> yeah, so this spot pretty much covers it. You do have the ability once to reset and refund all of your points. So let's say you spent, you got to level 20 and you spent 20 points on mostly on float fishing and you decide, actually, I don't want to do float fishing anymore. You can reset that and put it in something else. After that, if you want to reset it, it's five gold, which you might have to pay a couple of quid for to pay. That's the sort of premium currency in this game. But it's a free-to-play game, so they've got to make their money somehow. And I think that's fair enough, especially giving you one free one. So just don't go crazy with your points. But if you do fuck it up, don't worry about it. Like I said before, save your points early on until you discover a bit more about the game, what you like fishing and all that sort of good stuff. Like, yeah, so talking of experimenting, let's just go a little bit deeper. It's night time. They might drop down in the water levels a bit there. Let's just pull that out there. It's just sitting in that lovely green shit. I think that's the technical term. Um, so before we finish off this video... I just want to talk a little bit about crafting. So you hit the N key to go to crafting. Most of this stuff is available um, here anyway, but uh, like different ways to get into it, but they're just the shortcut. That's the escape key, by the way. Um, also, F1 key brings up lots of different, all the different shortcuts and everything like that. Um, so um, the N key is our crafting. 
So at the moment, we only have the ability to buy a loaf of bread and pull it apart into smaller bits of bread or buy a potato and cut it into cubes of potato because we're, apparently we're a massive idiot um, and that's all we can do at the moment. So you'll click on it here and it says, yes, I need required is bread. I've got one loaf of bread because you start with that. I've just been disconnected. I do apologize. My internet is playing up. Um, so fun times. Um, is he going to let me throw it back in? Go on. Is it my internet's just died, doesn't it? Okay, quick edit here but while I wait for my internet to come back. Fun times, Northern Ireland internet. It's the best. There we go, so we are back in. Anytime you get the server has a little far brain fart and kicks you out, or the server resets, or you disconnect and stuff, is you will be back at the sort of entrance point, but all your rods will be back in your inventory and stuff like this. So now we're here. My embarrassment of not catching the fish. So what I'll we'll do is show you a couple of little things. So there is one other building we haven't looked at, and that's the workshop. The workshop is where you buy stuff to you. You can repair your stuff. This little green line at the bottom is is the how damaged it is, so we, we don't have to repair that. And then you can buy stuff for making lures and all that sort of good stuff. Um, <clears throat> we can also buy, and this is <clears throat> one of your earliest purchases. A shovel. I'm actually just going to... But we can start with 50 silver. I'm going to buy a shovel. I need to be level 3. I can still buy it and use it at level 3, but because we can't use it, I'll just wait. So the first... I'll show you the first couple of things you want to be buying is a shovel so you can start leveling up that skill, um, the uh, harvesting bait skill, and getting yourself some free bait in worms. You also do dig up red worms, which are really nice bait as well, just smaller... They were angrier worms, basically. Um, so that's what you want to buy early on as well. And also the other thing you want to buy is a landing net. At the moment, you just have to swing fish in, which is fine when you're catching little fish. But when you start ca if you catch a bigger fish and you, you're on quite light tackle, it can be a struggle to get it in and you can lose fish like that. So nice and early on, probably the first two things I'd suggest buying is a um, landing net and the shovel. Um, and once you get a shovel, you can just hit U, and it'll be here, and you just click on it, and then left click on the ground to, it does use your energy, because, you know, it's tiring digging up worms. Uh, did we actually catch any fish? We did. Let's sell our one little fish. You'll get more money than this, don't worry, guys. It's not, like, that much of a grind early on, okay? Trust me, this... This is just my bad fishing that's causing this, right? Like I said, you can have a day where you catch 50, 70 fish without a problem and sell for 80, 100 silver and just have a lovely day, right? I'm just terrible at this game, it seems. Or the fish are just very shy of being on YouTube. One of those things. Right, there we go, my friends. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. Try to sort of stick to stuff I've covered because as the series goes on, We'll probably be covering other things as we get more in-depth and stuff. So what I'm going to do now is probably, like you should do, in this, 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 get, your, get, your, get your shovel, get your landing net, and then just start saving some silver, right? Save, save up your silver until the next video comes out, and then I'll show you the first things you should be buying on the lake and that will really help you level up quicker, earn more silver and all that sort of good stuff. And I'm going to leave you with a disgusting image of some dead fish. Mmm, pikey. I mean, they're pike, not pikey. <laughs>